many of us grew up learning about the basics of World War II. The Nazis were basically unstoppable, and then at some point everything went wrong for them and the Allies won. But the point I want to persuade you of is that they basically had no chance of winning the war in the first place. And there are actually three different points you could say that is true from. Let's start in December 1940. The war has been going for just over a year, and France has been beaten. Dunkirk has been and gone. Nazi Germany and the USSR are allies. A marriage of convenience, really. But that isn't going to last forever. Hitler has issued an order to prepare to invade them on the 15th of May, 1941. But wait, they are his allies. Why does he want to turn on them all of a sudden? Hitler wasn't famous for making sensible or rational decisions. And this is another of his biases getting in the way. He wants to beat the Russians, who he considers to be one of his biggest enemies, and also because he considers Slavic people to be inferior. But the thing is, they don't invade on the 15th of May, 1941. At the same time as the order to invade the USSR, he also gives an order for a different invasion that needs to happen first. And the target of that invasion is Greece. Why Greece? Because he knew a bit of history. There were already British troops in Greece and some of them had fought in World War I. That's a problem because in that war, the Germans had been pulled towards the Balkans in a front that took troops from more important places like France for no real benefit. Add to that, Germany was relying on oil from the USSR at that moment. But once the war started, they need to get it from Romania, dangerously close to Greece. And so, the British could attack the oil fields. And while the First World War was one of the first where oil access became key, in this war, and with German tactics relying on tanks, it was essential. So they don't want to invade the USSR until Greece is safe. On top of that, the Italians under Mussolini are trying to invade the Balkans. But the Greeks are winning the majority of the battles there. Hence the order to invade to sort everything out. And Hitler and Fedor von Bock, one of the more senior military commanders, decide they need to move the USSR deadline from the 15th of May to the 22nd of June, as the Greece invasion is taking longer than expected. Is this delay the reason they lost the war? Let's find out. Over a month delay looks bad, but it wasn't a completely stupid decision. The first reason it holds up is because the previous winter in Russia had been particularly harsh, and in May, the ice hasn't fully thawed. Add to that, the rivers are raging, and the roads are very muddy, making it hard to move tanks over. German tactics without tanks were basically non-existent. That said, later, Hitler said that the delay in Greece cost the Germans in the USSR. So was he right? That's what we'll skip to now. The 22nd of June, when the Germans are invading the USSR, the Soviets feel betrayed. Stalin has done nothing but give Hitler everything he wanted, and yet he's still been stabbed in the back. From Stalin, a man who made quite a few questionable decisions in his life, this certainly ranks as one of the core ones. In fairness, he should have seen it coming. Hitler publicly criticised USSR and communism for years leading up to the war. And suddenly, he was basically the best friend when it was convenient. Hitler and his army staff are convinced that one short, sharp attack that wipes out the Soviet leadership will lead to victory. So they do what the Germans did in World War II. Use rapid tactics to gain ground quickly, using their tanks, and surround their enemy. The goal is to take Moscow, at which point the Soviets will give up. More than 3.5 million German and Axis troops move into the USSR. Over 80% of the German army. It's one of the largest invasion forces of all time. 3,400 tanks lead the way, tearing through the Soviet defenses. Add to that, on day one, they have won the airbus with more than 1,800 Soviet aircraft destroyed. In the first week in Bialystok, Minsk, two panzer groups had managed to surround three different Soviet armies, capturing 320,000 men, a huge number. But the successes keep coming. In July, near Smolensk, two more armies are trapped, with another 300,000 prisoners taken. So from these two events alone, the Soviets are down 600,000 men. The Germans are becoming confident. And then, in the Uman pocket on 8th of August, my birthday, the Germans surround another two armies. This time they capture a mere 100,000 men. With so much of the Soviet army captured or killed, Hitler and his commanders say that one more big victory will win the war for them. So we know that Moscow is the ultimate goal, but Hitler decides that Ukraine is temporarily more important due to the resources it has. His army disagrees, but of course, he gets his way. They take Kiev in September, and by November they are close to Moscow. Victory is in sight. The Germans know that if they can take it, then they've won. The Soviets are overextended and can't defend themselves. Except that is completely wrong. 
As you can see from the stats I've just mentioned, huge amounts of Soviet troops are captured from June to August, and then it slows down a bit. When I say a bit, I mean a lot. They didn't get going again properly until October. Why? Firstly, their tanks and vehicles in general start to break down, but they also stop and get stuck for so long because the Soviets have had enough time to start fighting back. Those counterattacks are really starting to hurt the Germans, even if the Soviets are losing a lot of soldiers doing it. Nevertheless, Germans do eventually get going in October and reach Moscow by November. One last push and they've won. They try their classic tactic of surrounding the city and the troops that are defending it. They get to within 12 miles and can see the Kremlin, where Stalin is based. But something isn't adding up. They've inflicted more casualties on the Soviets than they thought existed in the entire Red Army. The math ain't mathin'. Uh-oh, maybe their intelligence is completely wrong about the size of the Soviet army. Yep, they aren't even close to losing. The Siberian armies have turned up outside Moscow and are pushing the Germans back. Hitler is furious and sacks the head of the army and several marshals for suggesting they should retreat. He puts himself in charge. We don't have time to get into that, but this famously does not go well for him for the rest of the war. The German army is exhausted and has been for months, and now winter starts to bite. Okay, okay, but could they still have won? Again, their own incompetence defeats them. The Germans have planned for this attack, and while yes, they thought they'd have won by now, they hadn't planned for anything except a quick win. To survive this winter, they needed three things. Coats, so they don't freeze, food, so they don't starve, and fuel and ammo, so they can keep up the pressure. To get it there at the right times, they need railways, but they don't have enough rail capacity to do all three. More like half of what they need. All of this is a long way of saying that no matter what they did, this invasion had failed, and the war was lost. Lost, I say. Surely that can't be the end of the war. It took the Soviets three years to push them out of Russia and invade Germany, but we'll see why it's doomed later. As the Nazis were surrounding Moscow in December 1941, another history-defining moment took place on the 7th of December. Halfway across the world, Japan attacks Pearl Harbor. That means that Japan and the USA are at war now. But another interesting thing happened. Hitler declares war on the USA. He is allied to Japan after all. But it was incredibly stupid. This is the second point they arguably lost the war. And the reason why will become clear as we get into the final point. Let's briefly take a look at the beginning of the war. In 1939, they destroy Poland. The next year, they do the same to France, which causes Britain to evacuate via Dunkirk. Then the Battle of Britain happens. Lots of British cities are bombed. Everyone in Britain, except those that like Hitler anyway, is terrified of an invasion. Doesn't sound like they were losing, does it? But the thing is, they have one effective tactic, which I've already mentioned, to attack fast and encircle their enemy. During the invasion of France, the French fall into this trap by sending the majority of their army to Belgium. They get encircled and captured, very easy. But despite all of this, some would argue that they had lost the war as soon as they declared war on Poland in 1939. So on the first day. You may be asking how that's possible based on what I've just told you. As I often say, it's all true, but that alone does not give the full picture. Firstly, these tactics only work if you call your enemies off guard. Once everyone knows about the tactics, it was possible to counter them. But the bigger deal is economic rather than military. By 1940, France and Britain have much higher military manufacturing capacity than the Germans. Part of this is that Europe doesn't have most of the raw materials like bauxite that are needed. But France and Britain have big empires all around the world. They can get hold of them. Okay, France is captured, but an invasion of Britain was never a realistic option. Sure, Britain was weaker than in World War I, but it still had a strong navy. So the reason that Germany lost as soon as they declared war is that unless they could get the USSR under its control rapidly, so they had access to more raw materials, they were always going to have to fight a war of attrition. And that type of war always suits those that have the greater resources, as World War I had already shown. Hitler and the Germans didn't necessarily know this already, but then adding the USA into that mix means that the overwhelming economic odds are stacked against them. As you can see, in the end, all three points are important. The economic reality at the start of the war meant that they had to try to win a quick war. That rushed them into an attack on the USSR without accurate intelligence of how strong they were. That invasion starts to go wrong before winter even starts due to that bad intelligence. During that invasion, they declare war on the USA, which was almost objectively stupid. The winter in the USSR kills a lot of their army. They were doomed from the start. And from December 1941 onwards, they are stuck in a war of attrition with enemies that can outlast them. It just takes another three and a bit years, massive Soviet resistance, and so many deaths, and eventually the invasions of Italy and France for the inevitable to translate into a huge defeat. It's worth saying though, that Germany losing the war was probably inevitable, but the way they lost the war was affected by the USA being involved 
and the way they lost the war. So as you can see, when Hitler blamed the Greece delay for losing in Russia, he either lied or didn't know why they had failed. And speaking of Germany losing a war from a seemingly dominant position, watch this to see exactly how they managed to lose World War I so suddenly in the last year of that war. 